شوم تو رو تیشی دیده لیه آشی دیگه مثلا بخونی تو هم تورا آه از آنها زاگی دو زاگی دو دم ایرو تا ولت ولت دم سریار ولت دم چی دم چی دم یاره دینیس Okay, okay, okay. That's right. So, Mona, Mona Lisa, uh, we begin. It's already five, also. Yeah, yeah. I have I have done the live. <laughs> yes. Sorry, sorry. You can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good evening to all, uh, respected professors, uh, faculty members, research scholars. Uh, I welcome you to the sixth weekly talk of Tiflani. And today, our speaker is Professor C. H. Yeswanta Singh. And Professor is going to give a talk on the topic, Opposite Linguistic Situation in Manipur. Uh, before I hand over, or before I invite the speak, uh, Professor Yeswanta to deliver the talk, let me give an, a brief introduction on Professor Yeswanta. Professor is very renowned and one of the uh, pioneer in the linguistics in this region. Professor Yaswanta uh, recently retired uh, as professor from the Department of Linguistics, Manipur University. Uh, it's, it's, it's a recent month only professor retired from the Professor Sif. And during his time, professor was holding the, before his retirement, he was holding the post of school uh, dean for the School of Humanities, Manipur, University, as well as head in charge of the dance and music, fine arts and foreign language department, Manipur University. So professor is also the former dean of student welfare, Manipur University, and former ISOD of linguistics, Manipur University, four times. And sir specialization is in the Tibeto-Burman linguistics and Manipuri linguistics. Uh, professor is a visiting scholar for Manipuri language from June to July 2007 in the University of Texas, USA. And Sir is also a Fulbright fellow, uh, fellow uh, for, uh, for the year 2006 to 7 in the University of California, USA. And there are some other important uh, uh, points also that I would like to mention when I'm, I'm introducing uh, Professor Yaswanta. So in the uh, Commonwealth Academic Staff uh, Fellowship in the year 1995 and 96, uh, Sar, was, uh, yes, uh, Sar was one of the fellow of School of Oriental and Africa Studies, Sowers University of London. And Sar has guided a numerous number of PhD scholars and he has given so many uh, papers in the international and national seminar, conference, and other academic programs. And Sari, SAR has completed some major projects under UGC and uh, under ICSSR and WhatNet development project under, uh, under the DIT project and the Hello Parcel tool for Indian languages, Indian languages corpora initiative and mother tongue survey project that is under the Registrar General of India, Kolkata. And Sar has published grammar on Manipuri grammar, on Tarao grammar, on Koyang grammar, Romai grammar, and Manipuri machine translation, Manipuri Sinsat, Manipuri grammar, a, a new Manipuri version on Bengali and Maitai script, and two Manipuri poetry books also. Sar has written a poetry books also. So, and Sar has attended uh, 41 national and uh, eight international academic programs, and SAR is the uh, chairman of various committees consul, uh, co constituted under the Manipur University. Now, uh, let me take this privilege to introduce, uh, sorry, uh, invite Professor C.A.C. Aswanta to kindly deliver his talk. Over to you, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you all, and a good evening to all of the listener and uh, we have to thank the corona also in one sense that sitting on in home in my room then the weekend uh, uh, taking the advantage of the listening any kind of lecture or any seminar like so uh, regarding the this point uh, we can uh, thank COVID-19 also uh, my topic uh, I'm coming to the topic uh, my topic is opposite linguistic situations in Manipur. Uh, 
uh, before starting this one, I want to just uh, share with you, and all of you know that uh, Northeast, we can take it as a mini India because of the varieties of the culture, then ethnic groups, then dress, the food habits, and others. And so, uh, how many languages, let us see, the families like? In the Northeast, there are, uh, one is the Indo Aryan, then Indo Aryan is represented by Bengali, Assamese, etc. Then another language the family is Austro Asiatic, that is Khasi. Then another one is Dravidian, that is the Tamil and the Telugu. This is uh, starting uh, from to, uh, 1000, 1960s, that's coming to, from Myanmar in the 1960s during the military rule in More. So Dravidian, I'm just uh, saying that because of the Tam, uh, Tamil and uh, Telugu's are there in the More, that is the Indo-Burma small town. Uh, then another one, that is the tibeto burman of the uh, Tibeto woman subfamily of the Sino Tibetan. And the Northeast, we can say that this is a concentrated TB language area. And so for that, we can just say that uh, in uh, says Northeast is a mini India. And when do we see the languages of the uh, Tibeto woman? In the northeast, in uh, we have the eighty state. In that, say we can start from the Assam also. So in Assam, there are Garo also, Dimasa, Zemi, Rengma, Sema, Nokte, Sin, Singpo, then the Bodo, Rapa, Lalung, etc. Then in Arunachal Pradesh, there are many Tibetan languages, and the major languages are. Adi, Apatani, and uh, Bangni, Akha, Dior, Miri, Karbi, like this. So many languages are added in Arunachal Pradesh, and not only these languages, they have uh, that uh, minor also, and uh, there are many of the dialects. And coming to Meghalaya, Meghalaya, we know that this is the Kasi is the one that is not the Austro. Uh, Austro uh, this is the Austro-Asiatic and the Intibeto Burman that the Bodo, Timasa, Garo in the courts is there. And in Mizoram, Mizoram, we can say that this is the also one concentrated area of the Tibeto Burman. That, uh, but here in this state, uh, Bom and the Ralte, that is really a endangered language. And uh, many of the bomb or Talte, uh, they changed their language to the Mizo. And in the very part area that is in the bomb and the Talte is there, and that is also uh, coming to the in danger, very much in danger, we can say that. And uh, uh, another state like the Nagaland, Nagaland, that is the mostly of the uh, Naga group of languages, that is. And in that, Rengma, uh, then, then Shema, Shangtam, and then Chang, and the others that poetry or form like this. Then in a Sikkim, in a Sikkim also, Nepali, Lepcha, Limbu, and the uh, other languages are there. And uh, Ban Drimto works on Limbu. That is a very good grammar. And uh, uh, there are other uh, languages worked done by the other people of the uh, young linguist. And uh, in Tripura, there are some third language of the Tibeto Burman and the Kogbrok and the Riang and the Halam, then like this, the Bete and the Kogbrok. That is, uh, I think it is often in the university. And uh, uh, then Riang, I think it is a very endangered 
Lengois. Then uh, coming to Manipur, that is uh, Manipur has around 34, 33 like, and uh, in the official classification of the languages, that is uh, the government has uh, classified any miso like this or uh, any uh, cookie like this. And uh, this type of the classification is slightly uh, not acceptable, but we'll say any cookie or any miso that uh, this type of the classification is not uh, very uh, scientific. So this is uh, my opinion to also, and I uh, in the uh, officially or in when I got a chance in the TV and the others, then I also mentioned this one. And uh, this is about the Nordic languages. This is just the foundation of the my talk. And uh, before that, the classific let us see a uh, classification. Classification done by the Grierson Kono, that is the 1903 to uh, 1928. And uh, uh, why I want to uh, say something about the classification of the different linguists. Uh, say in the Grierson, that he has the Gibbon cookie chain group. Then in the cookie group, he has the Gibbon uh, some branches. And in that that uh, subgroup, that uh, uh, say Southern Chin, then the Central Chin like, and in this the Southern and the Central, there is no any language of Manipur. Then in the third one, that is Northern Chin. In that the Tato Paite is there. Then in the the fourth one, that is the Old Kuki. Then in that the Mar Chiru Purum Gom and Aimol there. Then uh, the another one is the Naga group. So in that line, Grierson to Kono divided the one is the Kuki group of language, Kuki Chin group. Then another one is the Naga group. Then in the Naga group also, uh, say Naga Kuki subgroup uh, in that Tankul is there. And uh, Tankul there, then the Koipu, then others like the, the second subclassification that Naga Bodo then that is the uh, Kabu is there. So others like the Western subgroup and Central and Eastern are not related with the language, uh, uh, Naga languages of Manipur. And uh, in Sefer 1955, 1966 and 1972, in that also is the Gibbon, the cookies. In that Luhupa branch is there, in the Luhupa branch, Tankul unit is there. So this is then, uh, then the David Bradley in the 1994, uh, he has given that is the Northeast India, that is the Barik plus Sal, that's the Kamarupan. In the Kamarupan, what he has given to the is the three, the cookie and the chin and the naga. So in this cookie chin, that the cookie there, then another quantity is the Naga is there in that Tankul is representing and the Tankul is also known to the, as the Luhupa uh, branch. And uh, uh, and uh, this uh, David Bradley also mentioned about the Burlings and the Burling classification is also there that is was done in the 1984. And uh, Burling today has the given that not is in that the Sal, S-A-L. S A L sal, and why this is this taken to the, from the distinctive the etymob of sun S U N. So this is then uh, Benedict 1972 has classified that is the uh, cookie chin. This is uh, under the cookies and uh, the transition to naga like this. Then another in the transition to naga that the tankul uh, is there. Then the naga proper and uh, like this. Then the uh, Berlin 2000, Berlin 2000 today has the given to one is the Naga group, then another is Jame group, then another is the Mizo, Kuki, Chin, like this. Then Agro 1974 is given in the same like the uh, Kukis, Kuki Chin, then a Naga group, 
like this. And the Vogelin, 1972, in that also, that uh, the tree, that is the Naga Kuki chin like this. Uh, so in that line, the classification to the was done, and uh, Betty Shopa also in the 1994, 95, he has also uh, done. And uh, uh, another is, uh, that uh that yeah yeah then graham chulgut and uh and uh, uh what's called that uh la pola he has also given to the sub and uh, in the la polas that is the immigration and uh inhabitants or individual so these are to the mentioned in the classification to of the northeast so this is the uh classification and that uh, and the, so this is the three coming to the my real topic that is the three different linguistic situations of three places the first one that is the churachandpur district in churachandpur district there are around uh, 13 languages Pado, Paite, Mart, Wi Fi, Mizo, Zhou, Simte, Gangte, Kom, Aimol, Sote, and uh, Mati. This is. Uh, then in that, we get to see this how many villages are there. So these are the villages that there are more than uh, 300 villages in. Uh, this is the 324. This is the villages of the Chuachanpur district. And uh, then, then another one that let's see that. Uh, so these are the tables of the name of the villages. And now this one that the languages of the Chuachanpur. So in that, I have taken uh, languages that is. Uh, Paite, then the Aimol, then uh, uh, Sote, Mar, and the uh, uh, Simte, Baifei, Mar, Kom. So the languages are like the Paite, Aimol, then the Sote, then Mar, Baifei, Simte, Kom. In that, how similar they are, see? So I have taken the, say 20 vocabularies. In these 20 vocabulary, uh, vocabularies, that dog. So that is very much the similar. That uh, I'm all, then Jothe, then the Mar, then Wi-Fi, then uh, Simte, like, and the Com. They are almost similar. Then the second vocabulary is the cow, that the bong, and the, uh, uh, Mar, that is also Bong, then Wi Fi Bong, and the one is in the Gong, it is a Sera. Then water, that is to we all that the Paite, Aimol, Sote, Mar, Wi Fi, Simte, Gong, they speak that water is to Then the rice, Bu, or here it is slightly different, that is, then in the house, it is all same then the cloth cloth is uh that is a slight uh this similar between the paite that is the pawn then another is pun pun like this then another like the mar wifi and the uh, simte comb they are uh, same then hat hat it is blue then the that the alu then all all same that the except in the eye mole and the saute, it is addition to of the eye is there. Then the, this eye is the pronominal, the third person pronominal marker. In Manipuri, it will be ma, addition of uh, masam like this. That the ma is the third person pronominal marker and the sum is the hair. So that is in the face, like uh, then face also that uh, there is paite uh, is my. And I don't have it that the Imol and the Sote that uh, that uh, this uh, uh, this is very difficult to pronounce that H and the Ma the pre-aspirated Ma 
then others are all same than the eyes uh, that is also same than the addition to of the pronominal marker a uh, in the eyes meet then the tent teeth that is a ha or aha like all same then the could then a could like then the, this is almost the same then uh, sun i don't have the, that data uh, and the moon is also there in the last uh, vocabulary uh, are there that unavailability of that one and uh, the star in star also i have i don't have the wi-fi and uh, uh, mar and uh, the pite also so in the one one is uh this is the uh, one the a cut or a cut or a car like this and uh, two is the bunny then the ani or the ani or bunny like then then this is very shame the fight is uh nga, then the ranga ra, then panga like this they are also very similar in one sense then six i don't have the six of the i'm all and the chote but others are then the baruk that is in mar and the wifi is the gu and the simte is gu then another is the karu then uh, then then is the som almost then to the hill that is the state i don't have to do data of the i'm all and the chote uh, what i bring into of the this the trojan pool is that all the lexicals are the very much the similar and uh, when the, i'm a tato speaker then the another person is a com speaker or uh Baiti or mar or wi-fi that uh, i will speak to my own language the tato then another also will speak to his the wi-fi or Baiti or mar then we can understand each other and uh, that is the mutually intelligible but the claim is that uh, i speak different language and uh, what the difference in that quantity is the grammatical uh, structure in that like the that is the say uh, for example in paite negation in negation in paite they will use like the negative marker k then uh, that is the negative say like uh, uh, don k don is drink like this then the k is the negative marker then in imperative that in is the prohibitive marker oh no 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 this is the entity is the common marker so then the another is the, that uh, that here that is the uh, copula interrogative marker so the difference of what I bring it to is that in the negative, then the, in the prohibitive marker, then the, in the negative, uh, uh, in the uh, interrogative to question like the copula, uh, copula interrogative, in that they use the here. Then another one is a he. So like uh, say uh, in the nominative structure or the copula that is the a he and uh, say uh, amazon ahi so this is then the he is john then the when want to ask that uh, uh, john ahi like this nang john nahi so in that the here yeah, uh, is the is the uh, question the marker and uh, in the com negative it is the mark and the command marker is raw and the prohibitive is the mug plus command marker row. So this is, and uh, in the uh, question, that is the more. So this, this is, and uh, in uh, Tado, in Tado, the negative marker is low. Ne low, ne means the uh, eat, then the low, the negative marker. And the imperative, that is the in, so then the another simte in simte that is the negative marker is c uh, then the, say uh, apa is c 
that the R is the uh, third person pronominal marker and the pi is go, then the C is negative. That means uh, it does not go like this. Then the question is the uh, more and the uh, prohibitive is in. Uh, so in this, then I mole is, then the I mole that is the mark is the negative marker. This is the suffix and that have to be added to the verb. Then the question it is more. Then the imperative is raw. So uh, the difference is of the only of the, this type of the uh, affixed that for the negative, that for imperative, and that for the interrogative like. So this the small uh, morpheme uh, in, uh, it's indicating that uh, functional types of the sentences. So this much of the difference is there, but other lexicals are very much similar. But however, these the the people say, will say that I speak Tankul. Oh no no, I speak the uh, Mar. I speak Tado. I speak Pom. Then the Paiti like this. So this is a uh, very one situation, and they still they. Uh, Though there are many similarity of the vocabularies and only the difference is of the uh, some morphine, even though they uh, these people claim that they speak different language. And the opposite to this one, uh, opposite to this one is the, I can come to the uh, Ukrul. In Ukrul, and uh, people says that there are the more than uh, 200 uh, villages and uh, they have the um, four subdivisions and in that these are the villages so this is the villages and uh, what the opportunity is that this uh, say I have taken uh, Say Sangsak, then Hundung, Toi, Chadong, Fungyar, Mairing, Chongkai, Kamjong, then Maku, then uh, Hunfun. And uh, Hunfun is the, uh, so we can take, this is the standard quantity is the taken the Hunfun vocabulary and the uh, this is the standard Tangkul uh, variety. And because uh, the Bibles and translation it was done in the Pun Pun, this is very close to the Wino Bazaar. So this is the second as and the standard one. Uh, when we see that this uh, vocabulary that uh, say dog, for example, so how many villages are similar in this one? Then the then another one, then another one to do is that the cow, for example. Then cow, how uh, similar between or how they are different, this is. Then water. In the water, say then it is almost different if we can set it. And uh, another vocabulary is the rice. Rice is very much the different. Then the house, house is, uh, there are the same, it is used in the Pungyar and the uh, Chongkai. Then uh, I don't have the Kamjong and the Maku. Then the cloth, in the cloth that is, uh, that is also different. Then another one, uh, Hundung Tidi is the, uh, it is very much different from the other uh, dialects of Tangkul. Then, het. Het it is a ko or a ko ko like this, then uh, that kui and the akui or unlu like this. They are different. Then, the pest. Pest is also uh, so slightly similarity is of the my then the amai or amai like this then un, un, un me 
then the ice is uh, ice is uh, mic is used in the toyi, then another one is in the fungyar, then another one is jonggai. This is and the uh, hen that is also a pang similar is in toyi and uh, another one is uh, uh, fungyar, but others are all different. Then uh, sun, sun is uh, different. Then then the quantity is uh, very much different. Then white is panga, uh, that is the two there, that is a fungyar and the kundung is similar, same. Uh, then to the hill is kafung uh, is with the sangsek and the toyi. Then another one is the fungyar. Then another one it is a hunfung. Uh, and uh, what? Uh, we have to see if we have the more data then even we can uh, see also we can study also that uh, why the uh, say like uh, water then rice and uh, uh, so why this is uh, very much the different that is the we can uh, analyze also why this is the, and that the head also why it is very much the different of this the uh, ukrul. Uh, in the ukrul, uh, uh, this is why they are different. Then we can just see uh, something of that uh, they have the uh, they have the head hunting, and uh, why they have the so much of the local uh, dialects. So this is very interesting, and uh, we have to see that in the social linguistic then the, what's the reason of this much of the villages they have the different uh, dialects so this is the very much necessary to see say the two th uh, three uh, say things like the water is very important your life and the rice is also then head is also so uh, this is then the question is that why they are using the different uh, vocabularies and because of the head hunting not to know what i am saying to the other people whether they are doing that type of the some kind of the court or whether they change not to make a similarity between the, our neighbors because of that uh, 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 that the head hunting is there in, in those days then Another is whether they mixed with the other communities. And, uh, the, and in, in a demography, you do we see that uh, in demography, I think the, there is the last of the Uki inhabitants. And uh, another opposite to quantity is in the Trasanpur also, that the Naga are very last. This is also, we have to see that uh, is there any village of Naga in Trojanpur district. So these are also necessary. And why the question is the why the uh, the local dialects have different uh, varieties or the, the dialects. So this we can uh, see it then why it is so much different but the the very important thing is that uh, we will say that, that i speak tankul everybody will say that uh, which language you speak then i'm coming uh, i came to from the Ukraine, then the i speak tankul whether we are mutually unintelligible between the villages then another one that the opportunity to quantity is of the uh, Rajanpur. We know each other, but we said that uh, I speak Paiti uh, or Mar or Thadok. So these are very much, these two districts are very much the, of the opposite of the, when they said that uh, I speak this language. And uh, this is then. Uh, then uh, 
Now, how is it possible? This is also these languages, the villages have more than 200. And the, how these 200 villages are using the different local dialects. This is also very much uh, necessary to look into then how we can uh, study and uh, that uh, some in the future that it has some scholar that may come up and uh, to study of the, these varieties. And the one thing uh, we have the problem that is that, that uh, studying uh, languages in uh, say the Tarao and the uh, Monsang and the Moyon, the now the problem is of studying the by Manipur University in this the Tarao by the, this Tarao, then the Monsang. So there is a little problem that uh, they don't uh, like uh, to do that type of the study by the Manipur University the scholars or like, so this is uh, in one sense, it is very uh, unfortunate. And uh, what they said is that if the somebody have to study it, then there won't be any uh, material to be studied by their people. And uh, even in that also, I talked with their chiefs and uh, that please sent the sum of the student to be studied in the linguistic department, then uh, we can to work the further. If he understand what is linguistics, then we can to further work on about the languages. And in, say we can to say also that uh, this is some kind of the bone, or that in that bone, the one has taken the one bucket of the water that cannot make the dry, the bone. So somebody has to done some uh, linguistic aspect of the Tarao or Monsang and other things like in that, it cannot be exhausted. Somebody can do further also. And uh, I think that the Monsang is done by uh, Scott, Scott LNC. And uh, so that is then, uh, but the question is that the why the Manipur, uh, Manipur University student did not like. Why did no that, that the student, not the people, did not want to be study their language? That only they are the speaker, only the speakers can uh, they can study the linguistic work. So this is that is a little uh, very unfortunate thing to be, uh, be of this time. So this is very unfortunate. Uh, for us also and for them also then because uh, in nowadays in the in the class 12 that is the many languages more than the 13 languages that they have been introduced and the Tangul is also introduced in the BA this year the syllabus have already passed so this is then somebody have to study it then automatically the language will be developed and the documentation can be done also, but especially Tarao. I published the one the grammar that is not the enough and that is not the exhausted one. We can study in many aspects. And uh, this is the very uh, endangered language within less than the 500 speaker. And uh, so we have to do many uh, documentation in a different aspects not only the linguistics, then we have to do that uh, ethno also. So, and the, the generally, uh, because of the, this information technology development, the small language may be more danger because of that, the influence of the this information technology than the than the changing of the society that wanted to study the English and the other things like so then the the it will be more to faster in the speed in the extinct but we have to we have to do the documentation to do of these things 
these things. So this is very important, but the unfortunate uh, things that have to happen. So this is, and then another, uh, another thing that, that uh, the linguistic situation that is of the more. Uh, this is very much different to the, from the list two and uh, more. This is uh, uh, this is in the Indo Myanmar border, and we can uh, see that in a different uh, backgrounds. And this is a very small. The population will be less than the twenty thousand. And uh, the, I also in the beginning to also mention that there is the Dravidian uh, family that is the Tamil and the uh, Telugu is there, and the Tamil and the Nepali are migrated uh, from Myanmar in the nineteen sixties during the army rule in the Myanmar, and uh, uh, then. Other communities that like the Marawari, then Telugu, then the Bihari, and the Maitis are also there. And uh, the the source says that Kukis are migrated from the uh, Somra tract of Myanmar, and uh, many inhabitants in the Moray are also started. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Kukis, and the so, many Kukis are also inhabited in More after 1990 Naga Kuki War. Sir, we are, sir we are not able to see the uh, More slide, sir. We are still at the Ukrul. Oh, <laughs> oh sorry, I could not uh, make that one. Oh. Uh, that is, uh, that is. I feel very sorry because uh, uh, I cannot uh, prepare uh, that I cannot uh, see that one. So uh, that is, that, that uh, this is the uh, more, but there is not the much of that uh, data that uh, this is. And uh, in the more, we can the see one is the demography, and uh, another is the uh, another is the economic front. In the economic front, uh, say. After 2017, the transaction is two crore. That means the two crore that is in the daily that the Indian people they bought two crore transaction and the Myanmar site only 50 lakhs. And the in, this is the official one. Transaction in 2017, that is the two crore and the Myanmar that they use only 50 lakhs. And uh, this is the official, the, in the informal one, that is 1,300 crore to 2,000 crore in a year. So how this is uh, uh, very voluminous in the transaction in the, uh, say, indo Myanmar border in More. And this is the economic, the front and the, uh, uh, when did we see the languages, the language, this is, uh, uh, I want to give the example, uh, uh, this more is, there's a contact and the convergence. Contact and the convergence to, of, of the more, that is in the beginning early part, that uh, before uh, 2000, that was uh, Manipuri is used, but it is not so much as today. In 2020, uh, say the uh, there are one is the Napalong, and another is Indian site the Moria town that people can use uh, Manipuri also, and uh, those Napalong people also use in a slightly uh, not a pure Manipuri type. And uh, what we see today, that is the I, I don't have the data, the, but. Uh, I talked to the with the one person to the from the more he is there and what he said is that uh, today that manipuri is used very much say more than the degree what is the happening in 2000 before 2000 like and uh, because of the the transaction is also more of 
the Indian and the, their transactivity is also less. So the, the dominant language that becomes the Manipuri. And first time to it may be called as a, some kind of the trap language like that is only uh, Masi then the, uh, how much that is. Then now the, it is the beginning system that has the come out and now the changed to because the, the buyers and the traders are up from the Indian side. And so the economically, it, it becomes a dominant to one. So that dependent in Nepalong also, we have to seen that the, all the, the vendors, they can speak Manipuri well. And even in the Tumu, uh, that in the good restaurant or good one in that, uh, they also know Manipuri. So this is one is the contact is very much to with a, a foreign language like the uh, Burmese, Myanmarese, and the, then the mixing to do with the Manipuri. So this is uh, just the, I want to mention today as the contact and the convergence. So, uh, so this is uh, those the people they say like the Bihari, then the Tamil or Telugu and the Marwari. These people are there, but they speak this uh, Manipuri. And uh, very specific to the one to who has to do and the going inside the Myanmar and uh, they have to do that uh, type of the business. Then at that time, he has to know that the Burmese, he has to know Myanmar, he, uh, Myanmar is, he has to understand it. Then it will be easy for him to do the business. So when we analyzed, these the people to like the Telugu or Tamil or Marawari or Bihari and uh, uh, so of this Indian side, at least that they understand their language, mother tongue, then the Manipuri and uh, Burmese. So this, and uh, from that side also, they speak the Myanmar or Burmese and they can they speak the friendly Manipuri. So this particular small border town, uh, it is also very much necessary to study in the linguistic, uh, how it is done and uh, uh, the, some kind of the hybrid language may be come up or some kind of threat language. If it is not, then the, the dominant language may be Manipuri. But what we have seen in these days is that Manipuri is very much the use in that small town. Uh, so this is uh, uh, well, my time is more. Uh, so this is uh, something about the, um, the opposite linguistic situation in Manipur. And uh, I have taken the three, one, two districts. So one is the uh, Ukrul, then another is Churachanpur, and another one is the very small uh, town or very small place, which belongs to the district of uh, Tenopal. And but economically, it is very powerful and important uh, town. And uh, it is very much the important than the another two district like to Ukrul and uh, Swachanpur. Uh, this is uh, uh, something to what is the happening to the in the linguistic situation to the in uh, Manipur. Uh, so this is my very the short lecture. So any uh, kind of the clarification or any of the question. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, thank you, sir. Uh, it was a very informative and thought provoking presentation. And it's a very comprehensive presentation on the linguistic situation in Manipur, especially in three areas that is in the Surjanpur, Ukrul, and the More. Thank you, sir, for this kind of presentation and we are very fascinated fascinated to see
the data they have you have shown to us. Uh, Jian, your voice is very low. Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> is it? Is it? Is it fine yes. now? Is it better? Oh yeah, now yes, now it is all right. Okay, so uh, the what uh, what was the most fascinating point in your presentation was uh, uh, showing you know so many data from different dialects or different languages from this three region, and especially when we talk about the Kul district, I'm very much uh, interested, and I'm very uh, means it's very fascinating to know that Tangkul has more than ten dialects. That was really wonderful to know. Okay, now it is the time for a uh, discussion, question and answer. So uh, I invite all our participants to come forward uh, to ask any question or query from the speaker. Please unmute and you can speak. Hello, Professor Yashawanta. Yes, please. This is Mimi here. Oh, how, how are, you? are you? Fine, yeah. fine, fine. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, is, I'm really glad to see you hail and hearty. And, uh, <laughs> you know, like still working on the, so many languages. I don't have any question as such, but then the, the thing is that I'm just happy to see you well. And, <laughs> uh, you know, like healthy. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, I'm sorry, but I, you know, like I managed to just catch uh, 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 just in half an hour talk of your Bichon, your yeah. lecture, and I'm sorry for that. But mm. then, uh, I, as Bijan has said, like it's really fascinating as to how many languages we have in the northeast and just in Manipur alone, and probably that is not uh, exhaustive. Also, you mm. know, like what you have shared, isn't mm. it? So. Yes. Uh, and that gives us more reason to uh, work uh, like even harder. And um, all the linguists, instead of just, you know, like concentrating just on one language alone, but then, you know, like start, like start a comparative study as you have done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I wish you well. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Madam Mimi, for the compliment. And sir, you can stop your sharing so that you can see us also. <laughs> your screen at the top and yeah. yeah yeah that is i will do it okay sir and sir uh, uh, there is a question from uh, professor madumita borbora mm -hmm. uh, uh, let me read it out uh, yeswanta thanks for for bringing to light the opposite linguistic situation of manipur uh, one observation you labels like mother tongue and indigenous language why is it so so the professor Madhu, uh, Madhumita wants to know uh, labeling of indigenous language uh, and the mother tongue separately, sir. No, there is no the separate thing like mother tongue and uh, inhabitant. Now I'm not uh, saying that uh, mother tongue and uh, is different from the indigenous, and uh, we have to. Uh, mentioned that uh, which is the indigenous and uh, which wanted is the mother tongue, for example. Say, if to become to the uh, Tangkul, then that that the, what he is speaking in that locale, that is his mother tongue. That is. And uh, that can be also called as the indigenous. That is, there is no, uh, I did not uh, bring you all that the confusion between the indigenous and the uh, mother tongue. That is vision. Okay, uh, madam, uh, if you want to speak, then you can unmute and speak. <laughs> <laughs> I, yes. Are uh, you friend? Hello, hello. How are you? Fine. <laughs> Very interesting. No, no. I my the reason why I put the question was, um, mm -hmm. and that is the uh, government of India uses the term mother tongue oh. for languages which have population below ten thousand. Oh. 
and they are not introduced in the class schools or classroom. Yes. They're not recognized. So I was uh -huh. thinking whether you were thinking on those lines also. Okay. Uh, that that uh, SS Bhattacharya, mm -hmm. he has yeah. also uh, he has also that uh, make the difference. The one to is ten thousand below ten thousand are not taken in the census. Yeah, that is. He also yes. said very much in the meeting. But that is also very. Uh, uh, I mean, unfortunate, like you said. That means yeah. we'll be missing out on so many languages which are below yeah. 10,000 population. Yes. Right? We should yeah. do something, uh, document them maybe. Yeah, that is then the, uh, that spell, that uh, preservation and uh, what's that one? Protection, scheme to for preservation and the protection to of uh, yeah. endangered yeah. languages in that uh, the language, the first step to the was taken below 10,000, mm. the endangered one. Then in that, uh, in Manipur also, you know, we have taken very uh, last uh, speakers communities like mm. the Tarao, mm. then Koireng, and uh, Purum, and uh, Monsang, Moyon. So these are the less than 10,000, less than the five. A thousand. So mm -hmm. in the past the step of the spell, these languages are taken out. This is yeah. by the different uh, uh, scholars. I think yeah. the Bijan is also uh, taking <laughs> on endangered languages of Manipur and the other people also, other scholars also. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah. these are very necessary uh, to have uh, or to do the documentation to of the, these endangered languages, otherwise they may be uh, say extinct or in the process of extinction of the language. Yes, yes, yes. 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 There are so many yes. things to discuss, but it's really nice to see you. <laughs> really well. nice to hear. Take care. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Long time. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you, madam. Uh, now, uh, uh, Dr. Pogtang Hakif has raised the hand. Sir, you uh, unmute and speak, sir. Hakif, mm, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. So, uh, thank you, uh, Professor Singh. Uh, nice to see you soon after your retirement uh -huh. and giving us such a beautiful uh, lecture. I was, uh, I'm intrigued with uh, oh, two questions. Uh, yes. So uh, your topic uh, uh, raises uh, many eyebrows uh, regarding the under, under understood or uh, less understood aspect of uh, language, uh, relationship between language so this relationship between language, is, um, language and identity is something uh, which is uh, uh, not fully uh, worked out by linguists. So yes. most linguists, as of yet, we have been focused on grammar, descriptive grammar, and describing different grammatical structure of our own languages or some group of languages. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it comes to, uh, what do you call, relating uh, language uh, with the past, or with uh, culture and kind of thing, that is where we have to do uh, more work. And as we are just starting to introspect and see what we can do. So to this point, uh, one area where uh, linguists or languages or understanding of language can uh, help us understand our, uh, our past history is that we compare different languages, just as you have done. So with respect to Tangkulik dialect or Tangkul language, as we call, uh, I have, I've, I'm trying to work on this area, but I'm not, I have no uh, complete picture of what is going on. But my assumption is that uh, perhaps um, these uh, Tangkul, Tangkulik dialects or Tangkul languages around 10 or above, or more than a dozen of them, 
perhaps in the history, uh, in the in uh, way back in in the history over uh, 500 years back or so. So uh, they might have spoken different languages, very distinct. Even they, they are very distinct today. So some of these languages are very very close to what you call Kukichin uh, languages, and this has been uh, what you call uh, this has been uh, proposed by uh, Mortensen, who worked on uh, comparative study of Tangkul dialects. So most of these Tangkul uh, southern Tangkul dialects are very close to Kukichin, especially old Kukis. They are very close to old Kukichin. So this shows that perhaps uh, uh, under uh, when uh, when we split. Uh, from a Proto-Tibeto-Burman, I don't know in, uh, when, when we split. Uh, when, when we split is something that is difficult to define now, but perhaps uh, there is an understanding that uh, these subgroups or languages have split from uh, Proto-Tibeto-Burman. So when these languages have split from Proto-Tibeto-Burman, what happens is that there is mingling of people and people move in, into different direction and across different direction. So many of these uh, very closely Similar uh, Tangkulic dialects, which are very close to Kukichin uh, languages, must has must have been subsumed under uh, the Tangkul tribe. Uh, so that's how we see a lot of variation. And it is also uh, from uh, our understanding, this is very probable because wherever the Kukis are, the Tangkuls are also there. So Tangkuls and Kukis have been sharing the same uh, what you call geographical, geographical proximity even to this day. So despite the ongoing political and kind of issue, issues that, uh, for which we are not interested as linguists, uh, one thing that we can uh, gaze back in, into the past is that uh, many of these Tangkul dialects which are very close to uh, Kuki uh, perhaps must have uh, diverged from the so-called proto-Kukichin and after several years of existence, they have they might have been assimilated into what you call that tribe under the tribe nomenclature of Tangkul. So this is a one assumption. Uh, another uh, another uh, clarification, not clarification, uh, comments is that these Kukichin languages are of Manipur are uh, very close, especially those living in, for example, they are mutually intelligible. But some uh, those living uh, in different areas. So all Kukichin are lexically similar, but they are not mutually intelligible to Tado or any other uh, language of the uh, of, of the South, that is to example. So when languages separate, despite their, their lexical similarity, despite their morpho morphosyntactic similarity, when people separate for years and years, their mutual intelligibility becomes difficult. But those people who are still residing in, in and around, for uh, example, uh, because of a uh, constant uh, mingling of people, so that uh, uh, mutual intelligibility become easier. And uh, many of them, I don't call them language, strictly going by linguistic criterion of uh, what is language and dialect. So many of these uh, Kukichin languages, which we call Kukichin languages, are just dialect. They are far, uh, what you call, closer than Angami dialect, different uh, villages or uh, dialects of Angamis. So, so close that to use the term linguistically uh, language for this language, uh, for Paite, Simte, Gangte, Bai, Paitado, maybe linguistically a misnomer. But this is how languages and tribe have been recognized. Language have no role to play in it. So we go by whatever has been given to us from the census. So if they say language, we call language. If they say dialect, we call it dialect. So, but for, our, for the understanding of language, so many of these dialects of uh, many of these speech form of Kukichin can be called different dialects. And on the contrary, those Tangkulik, uh, uh, different speech form of Tangkulik uh, can be called separate languages, uh, uh, keeping away all these political and other governmental influences, always talking about uh, language as a criterion. Uh, this could be one of the reasons. Thank you. Okay. Uh Language and the identity, that is a very complicated one also. Uh, that is, uh, and uh, regarding that one, I can't to give the comment that uh, uh, the identity is not important or language is not important because these are very much different and uh, that is also very political one. And, uh, and another point that uh, you mentioned that in the proto, there may be that uh, Kuki and the Naga, 
and uh, in the Benedict classification of 1972 in that uh, transition to Naga like this. Then another is uh, Tangkul Kuki type like this. Then uh, Tangkul, then uh, Western Kuki like this. So there is very much of the similarity in some other uh, area that to which they belong together or share together in that, because the language is very much influenced by the uh, their proximity in the geographical one. Say like uh, what you also said that uh, the Tado or Paite in Chojanpur are very much similar and uh, then even say uh, Tado or Paite or Mar, which are in the Assam may be different from the Chorsanpur of, of Manipur because the quantity is in Chorsanpur area, then another is very much uh, affected by the Assamese or their locality one. And regarding the Tangkul, even the Berlin 2003 also said that uh, these uh, languages or whether they are languages or whether they are dialects of Tangkul. So in his opinion, that, that can be treated today as a language or that can be treated today as a uh, dialect of the one particular. And uh, so that uh, we need to study further then to, we can to come to the conclusion that this is different and that this is very much similar like this. And uh, in study, in the further study, we need the socio-cultural structure, the ethno is also very important and we have to see the history, how they are coming. And uh, when in which the year they come and uh, stay together. So these things are also uh, important in the studying or in identifying the language or this is different, why it is different and why it is similarity like this vision. Okay, uh, thank you, sir, for answering that. And uh, we have another question from one of the uh, program coordinator, Monali Longmalai. So she wants to know that uh, do people or in the Ukrul district consider those varieties as dialects of Tangkul? I like the situation for Kuki, where they consider its varieties as different languages. What can be the factors for such linguistics differences? Uh. Uh, the the Tangkul people, though they uh, speak their local, and the, this local dialect cannot communicate each other. So Sangsak people cannot communicate with Hundung, or Hundung cannot talk to the, with the Maku like this, or in the Toi and this. And what they have taken is that they uh, they speak that the Hundung taken to as a standard variety. So all the uh, people of Tangkul to which they stay in the different villages, they speak the Hunpung standard variety. This is, I think I answered this question. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I've got it. Thank okay. you, sir. Uh, thank you. And Yes, so Vijen, anybody don't if you still have time, can I uh, yeah, just yeah, ask please, uh, two please, please questions? Go on, out yeah, of we have time. Please. Yeah, so out of curiosity, mm -hmm. uh, Professor Yashawanta, mm, are these varieties being taught in school or not? Oh, in the school, mm. that is the Hunpung standard variety is not this the local variety like the Joiter or Kamjong or Sangsug or Mayring, these are not only the standard one is the Hunfung because okay. So the, out of the uh, ten varieties, only one is being taught, is it? No, no, no. Oh, sorry. This is a more no. The village each village has their own local varieties. Yes. So in the Ukrul, there are more than uh, say two hundred villages, and each mm. village has their own uh, local variety. This is the taken by the people. Okay. And the, what in the study that is in the school, in the formal quantity is taken, the 
uh, that is the Hunpung Standard Font. This was the first uh, Bible was translated in the Hunpung variety. And uh, the text that for the class three, four, and the other standard one is written by Victor Ahom, who was also, mm -hmm. uh, who has, a, who had done the PhD in from JNU. And he also, also written the grammars of the Tangkul. And in that, he used the Kunfung standard one. Okay. And uh, one uh, uh, we get to share is that the, this is started in a BA in MIL. Ah, and okay. in that, okay. that the Hunfung standard is taken. I see. Achha, then another question. Yes. Uh, these um, language groups... Um, Which language um, group? No, no. The, uh, those 10 varieties uh, under Tangkul, which uh, you are talking about. Uh -huh. um, I mean, are they... Uh, how, uh, how similar are they culturally to Tangkul? To the Tangkul uh, 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 people, so their culture and their dressing, and because the the Tangkul they have a, a certain way of cutting their hair, you know, like they have that Mohican style. So, <laughs> do these people also have that same uh, um, have that same habit of uh, of keeping their hairstyle in that way, the Mohican no, style? Is, yeah, where they shave where where they shave the sides of the head, you know, and they keep that middle portion only. So do these people also uh, have that uh, uh, have that cultural similarity or not? No, uh, that no. head hunting was done in the history. That is the say, 1000 no, no. years. Uh, you no, know, uh, Professor Yashawanta, I'm not talking about head hunting. I'm talking about the the uh, the hairstyle of the tangkuls. They yeah. have a particular mm -hmm. hairstyle, you know. It's called the Mohican style, where oh. they shave the sides. And yes, they yes, keep, yeah. And they yeah, keep, and keep only the, the uh, upper portion. Uh, the upper portion only. Mm. So, do these other uh, 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 like people or the, the the different groups under the Tangkul group uh, do they also have this uh, have this feature? Yes. So they may, are they, they similar culturally or not? Yeah. Culturally, they have the taken the similar one and mm. uh, in the dress also that okay. uh, in the dress of the women dress or the head gear or the men dress and the head gear they, they have the similar but there may be a little varieties and uh, okay. the, that the hairstyle of the uh, say male that mm. is uh, in the uh, in the headquarters of the subdivision, that it is yeah. not done in that line, and in okay. the very far corner, it may be of that type, but okay. that is also, yeah, otherwise it is not. So culturally, also they share. Uh, yes, yes, they share the same features. Huh? Okay, okay, yes, yes, right. feature. Just, just to make and uh, supplement uh, to, to the speaker yeah. uh, to the question of uh, Doctor Mimi. Yeah. Uh, I, I have the, I have not done any study on the Tangkul, but as an mm. uh, layman, how I can observe was, ma'am, uh, the Mohican or the hairstyle that used yes. to keep by the Tangkul people, cutting all the sides and keeping mm. only the upper portion. Mm. Uh, mm. We can see it from uh, one of the very uh, uh, renowned sing Tangkul singer. His name is Guru Ruben. So he used to yes, cut yes, it that yes. way. And when whenever he perform, he will come in his uh, full traditional attire. Uh, mm -hmm. And that with that haircut, <laughs> so I think no, no. when yeah when they no, want to present themselves, that is a themselves, very yes. like like distinctive feature of the tangkuls, you know, and yeah. uh, anthropologically also their head shape is different from uh, the other tribes. Yes, you know. Yes, their head shape is very distinct, so mm -hmm. you can easily make out a tangkul from the mm -hmm. uh, from the shape of the head. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, so. Like just taking uh, clues from anthropology and you know, like um, other sciences. Uh, so uh, I was just wondering whether you know, like there's some relation that that they should be forming a group uh, uh, called the the Tangkul group, you know. But then you say that they're culturally uh, similar. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, fine. Thank you. Stru- structurally, they are also different. They looks like the Aryan type because uh, the, yes, they the, have very high nose face, also. Yeah. Yeah. The face mm-hmm. is also very long in one sense, and it is very much yes. different from the uh, Uki group. Mm. That is, yes. and they have some kind of the Aryan type is there. Uh huh. Okay. So yes. all of them have this feature, huh? Uh, just okay. uh, that is. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Let me let yes, me begin to allow me. I have yes, a sir. Very, go on, sir. We have time. Still, we have time. Okay. So. Uh, uh, this is in the form of my, what you call uh, my uh, so ongoing thought that <clears throat> uh, about uh, proto reconstruction about about the classification of Tibeto Burman languages. Uh, every linguist thus far have said that there is no what you call uh, su- uh, what is sufficient or there is no clear cut uh, classification at the lower level. So the classification of Tibeto Burman. Uh, uh, lies with the lower level. At the lower level, so linguists are lost how to classify them. So we have, um, my assumption is that uh, from the proto tibeto Burman to Naga languages or Kuki languages, there is an intermediate uh, proto-language, which uh, tentatively we may call, we may give any name, we can give X, Y, Z, but which I, I, I thought I will use something like proto Kukichin. So my assumption is that at, between the individual uh, the Naga Kuki group and the proto tibeto Brahman, there was an intermediate uh, p- group uh, classification or a proto, form, pro- proto, proto form, which I call uh, proto Kuki Chin. And from there, uh, uh, na- like Naga languages like uh, uh, Angami, they are very distinct. So they have uh, uh, taken different part, Ao have taken different part. So, but when it comes to Manipur area, what happens is that in Manipur or in ben, uh, Myanmar or Chin Hills, so there uh, there was another route. Uh, this route is what we creation called Kukichin. So under Kukichin, even Manipuris come, uh, Manipuri comes, Maite also come. So Manipuri, uh, Manipuri, all the Kukichin languages, and perhaps the Liang Rong, Liang Mai, Rong Mai, Zhe Mai also must have taken the same route at at at, at to certain points. Then at other certain uh, further points, the Manipuri, because of uh, uh, proxylization to Hinduism, they have adopted uh, Hinduism, but, uh, ling- uh, but linguistically it shows a lot of lexical similarity. The Zirengrong also have lots of lexical similarity. And yes. Tangkuls are yeah, perhaps also. intermediate to, to <laughs> Kukichin. Tangkuls are perhaps intermediate between Kukichin and proto Kukichin. So Tangkuls are not uh, very, very different from uh, Kukichin language, except that they have low stem alternation and verbal agreement, but lexically, it is also still very close. So perhaps, uh, if you look at uh, culturally, I have compared some uh, folktale, folklore belief system. Tangkuls have shared many cultural uh, uh, folktales with uh, uh, many of the Kukichin languages. So even culturally, and the way of disposing their belief uh, practices, so they still have some common forms or so-called what we call dometry, which we call marung in Ao, and also they have all this marung system apart mm. from their uh, body features. Body features, of course, their Kukichin have slightly different look. Tangkul might have slightly different look. We really don't know how, but based on only what we call this uh, morphology, uh, anthropological, physical morphology, mm. you have, we need also to look into cultural morphology. Uh, 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 anthropology. So we need to do a lot of work to relate uh, linguistic language with culture and <laughs> whatever. So to give us a good picture. So ours is a very important field that I consider, which can throw light into the past. Not only digging into grammatical function, we can really dig into the mystery of uh, culture, history, what was there thousands of years back, or so so many things we can do. So this was something that I had in mind. I started writing up something, but I got lost and I really don't know how to continue. Perhaps in future, I might ask you something if I need some help. Mm-hmm. Uh, I totally agree with you how, uh, uh, about Tang. Yeah. Mm. Yes, the, we are just starting the studying the, of the Tibetan language languages and uh, we need to study uh, in deep 
that uh, reconstruction and uh, proto uh, proto form that is there some kind of the intermediary proto form and the others and uh, for uh, kuki that is the van vik i think uh, you know that the van vik who did the phd in uh, university of california berkeley he has the, done the proto form of the cookie group of languages and uh, but no one today has done to on the, the another uh, naga group of the languages like this is and uh, there may be because we need to study very much in, in a scientific way that is okay thank you uh, yeah do we have uh, any other question and query from participants Okay, if uh, we don't have any more question and query on observation, then I would like to uh, request Dr. Monali to uh, uh, propose the board of thanks. And uh, before that, I would like to, uh, uh, yeah, wish all our Tivlani members as well as the audience who have attended today's session, a uh, Merry Christmas and advanced new year. Thank you. Same to you and everyone else. Thank yeah, you. Same to you, same everyone. To you. Merry, Christmas. Thank you. Um, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you to all the participants uh, present here today in the last uh, weekly Tibetan Brahman talk series of 2020. And uh, I'd like to thank our uh, speaker, Professor Yashwanta Singh, for uh, giving his precious time in presenting a talk on opposite uh, you know, linguistic situations in Manipur. And um, it has given us uh, quite a lot of uh, thoughts to look into not only language documentation, but also into the applied form like uh, linguistic anthropology, ethnolinguistics, cultural anthropology, history, so the scope has been broadened by the speaker and I'm, I'm sure that future research, researchers and research scholars also will um, work on this particular area and aspect. Um, I also would like to thank uh, our moderator for the session today, Dr. Vijay, for helping me uh, complete the session. And also to all the uh, participants who have raised questions and taken uh, a part in the discussion today. I also would like to make an announcement that we will be beginning our um, seventh weekly Tibetan Brahman talk series. I mean, the seventh talk will be on 9th January and um, we will soon update who will be the speakers for the uh, month of January in the WhatsApp group in, in this week. Um, so with this, I'd like to uh, thank everybody and uh, wish you all a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all. <laughs> thank you, Monali. Thank Same you. to you. Thank Bye. You, Bye. 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 Have a pleasant Bye. evening to all. Happy, happy advanced thank Christmas you. to one and all. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, happy Same Christmas and a happy new yeah, year happy, in advance. Happy New Year. Yes. I will be spending my Christmas in my in my room so you will enjoy. <laughs> you will be in Delhi, huh, Bautam? I will be in my room. In Delhi, oh. in my room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay.